Right, folks, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. We've transitioned from uh, electromagnetic spectrum and waves into electrons, which are the things in the atoms that interact with the electromagnetic radiation, and quantum numbers, whatever they might be. Hopefully, by the time we're finished, in 10 minutes' time, you'll know. Well, that's the goal. Um, electrons. Remember we said that uh, light can behave as um, waves or particles? Well, electrons can do that as well. Electrons can behave... We always draw an electron like it was a little blob, like it was a thing. But they can behave as if they are a wave. In fact, the SQA want you to know that electrons behave as what's called standing or stationary waves. A standing wave is... Uh, an example of that would be if you held, uh, if you had a skipping rope and you bolted one end of the skipping rope to a wall and you stand here at the other end um, with your hand on the end of the rope. If you wiggle the end of the rope up and down like that, depending on how quickly you wiggle the rope, you will get, believe it or not, it's tricky to see, but you will get a variety of different patterns. And these are known as standing waves. Um, depending on how fast if we go the rope, you'll get a different number of standing waves occurring. But let's just not worry too much about that because that is the only part of this the SQ wants you to know. But if you're really interested, go and look on YouTube. There's fascinating stuff in it. Um, these are called waves that vibrate in time but don't move in space. That's because you're it's as if you're looking at a snapshot of it. There are different sizes and shapes of these standing waves, uh, and we call these standing waves orbitals and each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Um, so if we go back to the simplest standing wave, I suppose, which would look like that, then you can fit two electrons into this orbital. Um, and that's what we've referred to over the years as orbitals. And an orbital is a volume of space that can hold a maximum of two electrons. The different shapes on types of orbitals are governed by um, four numbers. Uh, these are our quantum numbers. Um, let's start with the quantum numbers. Yeah, let's go with the principal quantum number, n. So n is what's called the principal quantum number. It has values of 1, 2, 3, d -d 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 upwards. Um, what does it tell you? It tells you which energy level this particular electron occupies. Can I flash you back to something that I did when I was a child because I was incredibly geeky? Uh, and I also decided to like to feel superior when I found out that addresses, my address as a child would be 45 Sutherland Drive, uh, Denny, Stirlingshire. And then I would extrapolate that address on a bit more. I'd go Scotland and then UK and then the planet Earth and, you know, and then the Milky Way. Sorry, the solar system first and the Milky Way. Probably just me that did that because I was sufficiently weird. But that's basically what these quantum numbers will do for any given electron. It's like the address of the electron to a very, very specific degree. Um, so that's what our four numbers, our four quantum numbers, are going to tell you. They're going to tell you which energy level you're dealing with and a few other things that we will go on from there. Happy with that so far? So that's our principal quantum number, N. By the way, do you remember the states? Uh, not states, sorry. Do you remember the numbers I put on these energy levels from the last time? One, two, three, four... Well, that's your n numbers. Okay, let's do the next quantum number. This has not changed its notation, so you'll find it in all the textbooks and previous old past papers as just being the letter L. Now, this has a name. It's called the angular momentum quantum number. That is probably instantly forgettable. I wouldn't worry about that. What's much more important is what does the value of L tell you? 
the value of L tells you the shape of the orbital. And remember, the orbital was a piece of space that you find this particular electron in. So, what are the values of L? And the values of L are from 0 up to whatever n value you've got, minus 1. <laughs> when I hear myself saying this, I can just hear you scratching your heads. Don't worry, I promise it will become slightly easier to explain. In blue, I'm going to go with some examples of this. So in black, we've got the names and symbols. In red, we've got what this number here actually tells you. Um, so I'm saying it tells you the shape of the orbital. So what we need is a little table which connects the value of L to the shape of space. And I'll try and draw it just to give you a laugh. So when L is 0, it is nice and easy to remember. It's a sphere. So it's the same as that, only promoted it into three dimensions. So it's a sphere. When L is 1, sorry, when L is 1, then we are dealing with a, difficult to describe, it's a bit like an hourglass. You know what an hourglass is? Or an egg timer? Probably not. Um, but it looks like this. Um, when it, L is, well, I'll come back to L, L being too later on because it's complex enough for the moment. Um, to add slight complications onto this, these have got uh, names. These are called S orbitals. These are called P orbitals. And there's a couple more um, that you do actually need to know about, so I might as well fill them in. When L is 2, then these are called D orbitals. And you're never ever asked about these very much, but it still appears in the document, so let's put it in here. When L is 3, then these are called F orbitals. In case you're wondering why they picked these random letters, these were letters used back in the bad old days of spectroscopy to describe lines. Sharp, I can't remember what P stands for, diffuse, fine. So they're just stuck with these antiquated notation types. Um, now I said in blue that I'd try and give you an example here. So N, let's pick a particular electron, we'll try and work out its address. So this electron is in the first energy level, so that means N can only be one. That's the first energy level. Um, L, it says over here that L can be from 0 up to n minus 1. Well, there's only going to be one value of L, and it's going to be 0. Because n is 1, so that we're stuck at just 0 for that. Back to black, as the song says. Um, and we're going to have a look at the next quantum number. This is the one where they have changed, um, they've changed the notation a wee bit. It's now called M with a subset of, a sub, uh, script, sorry, of L. Uh, this is called the magnetic quantum number. Again, totally forgettable and almost useless, this name. But in red, I'm going to tell you what information this gives you. This tells you how many pairs of electrons you can fit in a particular orbital. So we're cascading down N controls L and L tells you the shape of your orbital and then M tells you how many pairs of electrons you can fit in one of these orbitals. What are the values of M? Well, the values of M 
are negative L up to 0 up to positive L. And in blue, I'm going to try and work out what this will actually mean. When we have a value of 0 for L, that means negative 0 up to 0 up to positive 0. Well, OK, that's just going to be 0 then. Now, does that mean that there are zero pairs of electrons? No, it doesn't. What you get from this is not the actual number of, not the, not the value of L, it's the number of values of L. Let me rephrase that for a second. Um, let's say, for example, L had been 2. Let's take a hypothetical example from here where L was 2 then ML would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. That's five values, so you can fit five pairs of electrons. This particular case here, when L is 0, then ML is just going to be 0, that is one value. So you can fit one pair of electrons. Going back to our example here, um, we are dealing with the first energy level. We find that L is zero, so therefore it's a sphere, it being the, the volume of space that you can find electrons in, and it's an S orbital. ML, for this value, has only got one number, so therefore we can fit one pair of electrons into this piece of space. I said there was going to be four numbers, um, but do you know what? I think we'll just stop there for a second. We'll come back to the fourth number in just a minute because I'm going to ask you a question here. This is a dead easy question though, unlike this far out stuff. <coughs> this was a question we addressed all the way back in third year. How many electrons can you fit in the first layer of an atom? Two electrons. The first layer of an, at an atom, we draw it as a sphere, and there's one pair of electrons in it. That is where that magic two number came up with. Nobody's ever asked me in donkey's years, nobody ever asked me, why is it only two in the first layer? Because we fudge over it and we say, oh, it's small, it can only take two. The quantum numbers only allow it to have two electrons in the first layer. This is why. Hopefully, right now, you're making that ah noise in your head. That means I see why that is. Or possibly screaming away in fear and hiding under the table. Um, right, going to take a run through this from the top for a second, guys. Um, electrons can behave as waves. The SQ wants you to know that, uh, standing waves, and what they're saying is these standing waves have certain shapes in space, and uh, the shapes of space are governed by quantum numbers. In case you're wondering where quantum numbers came from, by the way, they haven't just popped out of the blue, they are variables in an equation called the Schrodinger equation. Um, but you don't need to know that, and I'm not going to show you it. So you're going to have to take this on faith, which is a terrible thing to do in science, of course. Um, you just kind of go with the fact there are four of these quantum numbers. I haven't done the fourth one yet. What do they tell you about electrons? They are like the address, the lines of an address of an electron. And so far they tell us, this tells us which energy level the electron occupies. This tells us which shape of space and name of the shape of space. Uh, this, the, the number of values, corresponds to each pair of electron that can exist in this particular shape of space. I think I'll do the last quantum number, and then we might have to look at some examples in this. Now the last quantum number is, I've had a great preparation for that, I just filled the entire page up with three of them. We'll pop the last quantum number here. So the last quantum number, again, they've changed the notation of this one slightly. This is called ms, and this is the spin. 
magnetic quantum number. Now, what does it tell you? And what are its values? The good news is, the values are actually surprisingly sane, unlike all the rest here. This can either be plus a half or negative a half. What does it tell you? Well, the SQA says that it tells you the direction of the spin. But that's not really very helpful, is it? Who cares which direction electrons are spinning? Well, <clears throat> there is a reason that you should care because let's say we had uh, this address here. Let's go back to this address here. Because we, if, if I draw in blue, let's draw ourselves a nice little S orbital. It's a sphere in space. It occupies the first energy level. It's right down on the ground state here. And there are two electrons in this. Here's electron one, and there's electron two. Now, at the moment, you cannot distinguish between these two electrons. You're missing the last line of their address, like flat 1a or flat 1b. So that's what this last quantum number enables you to say. Ah, this one here, this is positive a half, and this one here, this is negative a half. So now you can tell these two electrons apart. Why is that important? That's important for one of the three principles. In addition to these quantum numbers, I'm going to explain three concepts that are called principles, and um, it's essential that you're able to tell two electrons from each other, even though they're in the same bit of space. Um, but I'm not going to talk about these principles just now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and perhaps go with some more examples on this. Feel free to pause the video and go and cry in the corner if this is giving you a headache. Um, the good news is, if it is giving you a bit of a headache, don't worry folks, I'm happy to clarify it when we eventually get back to work. And of course you can contact me, private comment anytime you like, through Classroom. Um, with any queries. Right. Let's try some examples. N is 1. L can only be zero. ML can be negative zero through zero to positive zero. <laughs> so that means ML is just zero. And S can be plus a half or minus a half. And that's the first two electrons in an atom. I'm going to represent them as little arrows in a box. Um, and we'll do one arrow for the positive, uh, negative of course, we could pop the other arrow like that, couldn't we? There we go. So there's two electrons in this orbital. Is there a more compact way than this nonsense? Yes, there is. We can say that this is the 1s2 orbital. Now, what's going on here? N is 1, so that's why it's a 1. L is 0, and the little table on the last sheet said that when L is 0, it's an S orbital. It also is spherical in space. So that is that. Um, and we said that the number of values of ML tells you the number of pairs. There is one value, so therefore this can have one pair of electrons, and they're both in here. That's just why this is 1s2. So which element are we dealing with? We are dealing with helium, of course. That is the way to describe the electrons in helium. Let's move up to the next complexity. What if we had three electrons? Well, the first two electrons will just have this set of quantum numbers. Then we need to skip. We're now full up, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that or not. We can only fit one pair of electrons in here. Um, so we're full up. Let's go to the, the next one down. So we're going to have to go up a value for n, aren't we? n is now going to have to be 2. 
Now L can be zero. And if you remember here, we said that L can range from zero up to N minus one. So that means L can now, whoopee, be something other than zero. So L can be one. Now ML, for this example here, ML is still stuck being negative zero up to zero to positive zero. So it's just nothing. This one's a bit more interesting though, because ML can now be negative one, zero, positive one. In other words, oh look, three values. Three pairs of electrons. And this has got one value, so one pair of electrons. And we're dealing, of course, with the second level up. Look, look, I'm all excited. You have a total of four pairs of electrons in the second level, and that's where the magic eight comes from, that we've been using for all these years. Why eight electrons? And the answer is they're actually subdivided into two, one pair, and then three pairs. Do you want to go away and try n being 3 by yourself? We'll see how you go on. I'll stop the video for there because that's enough. You might want to go back and have a look over this again. Thanks for listening.